Um, so today what we're doing is, yeah, we're just going into a little bit of mindset about you and where you actually sit with your journey of spiritual awakening. Now, from time to time, occasionally I get people that come to me and they've tried like all variety of other modalities. And it's, it's a little bit um, like I personally, I feel a little bit sad when I find people in this situation because they come to me and say, you know, there must be something that's inherently wrong with me because I've tried everything and nothing is working. Right. And, and to be honest, it's the most devastating thing for me to hear because I don't believe there's anything wrong with anyone. You know, I see the highest potential in, in like every single person who meets me, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what your life situation is. Um, and if you are one of those people that is struggling because you've tried a lot of different things and then this, this group has become your, like your last resort, um, what we actually need to do for you first is to just unwire some of that mindset which is like actually preventing you from receiving the full benefits of this program right because if you have this this ingrained belief in yourself now because of your past experiences that there's something wrong with you then it actually stops you from from moving forward and receiving this because it stops you from trusting in the process right and i, I know how difficult this is because if you have tried it and you know i'm genuinely deeply sorry to those of you that have tried a thousand other things and haven't had any success um, all I can say is you've probably just been trying the wrong things. And this is where there's like, there's so many different tools and modalities out there and different things do work for different people. Um, and I know, you know, everyone resonates with different practices and stuff like that as well. Now I can only speak from my experience in that every single person that I've worked with has received exactly what they need to receive. And I think one of the biggest blockages and barriers that people have is like this idea that it has to look a certain way. So Wendy, I've just, I've seen your comments. Um, and I know from, um, you know, a little bit of backstory about you as well. It's like, you're really attached to this idea that having visuals is your, is your goalpost for spiritual development. When I can actually say to you that that's completely untrue. You know, and, and the faster you can let go of that belief, the faster you're actually going to have progress in this group. The way that I work with clients is that we always hone the gifts that you already have working for you. We don't look at what's not working. We look at what is working because when you put your energy into what is working, the rest of it is guaranteed to come up. Now, it might take time. You know, these things don't happen overnight. But what happens is like you have to shift that that mentality that you might have created for yourself because of certain expectations that you've had around what you think spiritual development looks like. Now, I can tell you right now that there is no one right way of developing yourself spiritually. There, there isn't one, you know, like I know the journey that I've had, but I've also worked with thousands and thousands of people and every single one of those journeys has been completely different. So so spiritual development doesn't have a step-by-step -step linear trajectory. And I think you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of frameworks out there that, that do promote it in that way because people have tried to quantify it. Like, for example, some of you may be familiar with the, there's like the thousand levels of consciousness. I can't remember the author of that book, but they've basically gone and frameworked and like measured saying that, you know, if you're uh, like anger is at this level and like jealousy is at this level and peace is at this, and they've basically quantified it which I understand what they were trying to do. They were trying to actually bring into the 3D a concept that was otherwise not recognizable. And I recognize that it's an important stepping stone for human consciousness, but you can also get very attached to those things. So that's where it becomes a little bit of a double-edged sword there where, you know, if you have come through some of those schools of thinking where they say to you, well, you have to go through these levels of ascension or you have to go through these stages of development and they've mapped it out linearly Sometimes when, if you're at say like level one and you're not achieving level two, you can start to think that there's something wrong with you when in reality you might have opened up stuff in levels three, four, five, and six, but you haven't noticed it because you've been so focused on what's not happening at this level here, right? So if we take away that linear framework and we actually start acknowledging what is going right for us and what is developing in us, what happens is you actually shift that that mentality and that mindset around what it is that actually needs to happen so um so again with the visualization thing um there are lots of ways to perceive energies now i i use visualizations it is actually one of my primary teaching tools and i personally i'm a visual person but i've taught many people who aren't right so 
So if I'm telling you to visualize something and you're just not able to see it, you actually don't need to, right? Whether you can see it or not, the process is already happening. And for many of you, there might actually be quite a few of you in this group that there's like more of a feeling sense that comes in, right? There's like a feeling capacity or there's a, an inner knowing that happens. And that that is actually what we focus on. Because when you focus your energy into what is, you know, perceivable to you, then your spiritual gifts in the other avenues will develop over time. It's just that if you keep focusing on what's wrong, you actually don't put energy into what's right. And that then it can't develop. Now, I'm, I'm a huge believer and I've seen time and time and time again that where, where your attention goes is where energy flows. So if you're constantly in this, this process of having to figure out like all your blockages and, and figure out all the things that's not working, you can actually end up in this perpetual cycle of like this, this personal development and like you know, people call it like shadow work, which I'm not that into. Um, but you, it's like this process of always focusing on fixing yourself. Now, here's another idea, right? What if there's nothing wrong with you ever, right? Like what if there never was anything wrong? What if there was never anything bad about you? You're just, you're having this human experience, right? Now, the faster you can accept the present as okay, the faster you can actually expand from that. And it's not about fixing. It's not about, um, I even, like, I know I'm technically in the category of energy healer, but for those who do my trainings and stuff, I actually am very much against that word because it's not about even healing. All it is is that we remember our wholeness. Now, if you're not experiencing that right now, if you're not experiencing complete wholeness, yes, there are things that you can do to expand into that space. But there's also that trust in like your personal journey in, you know, knowing that things will awaken for you at the time that they're supposed to awaken for you. So I know, um, particularly for those of you that are like, I, I don't hear, hear messages. I can't connect to my higher self. I don't get the synchronicities. I don't see the 1111s. I don't see the visuals. Like there are so many things that you might not be seeing, but if you're constantly trying to attain what you don't have, what the, the undercurrent message that you're telling yourself consistently is that there's something wrong with you. And that, that is the piece that actually needs to be dismantled before you can like, actually move beyond that. It's, it's such a massive catch 22, you know, it's like, you kind of have to, um, you, you have to believe in your wholeness before you see it so that you can then see it. Does that make sense? This resonating i know it's a bit of a, a tricky concept sometimes to get get your head around um and, and what i'm really inviting each and every one of you to do is to come up just to come into a space of acceptance with where you're at because acceptance leads to self-love and when you have self-love guess what you expand and then your spiritual gifts start to awaken but as long as you're coming from the framework that there's something wrong with you you don't even have the opportunity to grow from that you know, and I don't, I, I truly, truly don't believe that there's anything wrong with any of you. You're all having individual experiences. Yes, some of you might not be receiving visuals. Some of you might not be seeing number sequences. Some of you might not, you know, have financial abundance right now. And that's okay, right? Because in, in all of that and behind all of that, this is where we start to see the bigger picture. Behind all of that, each and every one of you is actually the same source frequency, right? And I see that. I see that when I look at each and every one of you. And so no matter what experience you're having in this reality, there, like fundamentally, you are all whole. You just, there's a part of you that hasn't remembered that. And, and I really do invite you to have that love and that trust and that patience in yourself that you will receive the gifts at the time that you're meant to receive it. Now, where the activations come in, is that they, you know, they allow an energetic transfer, a vibrational transfer to your energy field that actually allows you to, if you're ready for it, to actually step and, and you know, very gently blossom into that level of awakening, to very gently blossom into that space, right? So, yeah, I really just want to invite you guys, you know, today, but also for, the, for as long as you're in this program, Keep focusing on what's right. Keep focusing on what's working. Keep developing the gifts that are already there. 
it took me years before I could hear stuff in my meditations. Years, you know, but I, I always worked with what I had. And for me, I was typically, I had um, my two strongest ones were actually just visual and knowing. And I find that if you have an inherent gift of knowing, it's actually the hardest one to work with because there's no, there's no sensory confirmation. So if you're not like hearing things, if you're not seeing things, if you're not, even if you're not having physical sensations in the body, but sometimes you just know things like you just know when somebody's going to call you, you just know when, when something's wrong with someone, you just know when something is happening. Like those are psychic gifts, you know, and if you have the knowing one without any of the other ones, that is literally the most difficult space to be in because you have no way of confirming that. But I've learned when I've worked with people in the past who've had that particular pathway that a big part of your journey is, is about the embodiment. Because what you do is you take that spiritual knowing and part of your role is to integrate through your physical body, which means that you have to get comfortable in navigating that space without the auditory, the visuals, you know, or anything else. And when you can get truly comfortable with that, then if it's in your path to do so, those gifts will come online. And Wendy, yes, I'm very aware that that's your pathway. And I, and I, I really empathize in the struggle in that because it's, it's not always the same pathway as other people. Right. And the, the biggest thing I can say to people who are in that boat is if you have a sense of knowing and you don't have any of the other confirmations, keep trusting that knowing because the deeper your trust goes in yourself, you actually don't even need to rely on the visuals. You don't need to rely on the auditory stuff. You don't need to rely on messages. You don't need to rely on any of those things what it does is it gives you a real depth of connection in yourself. What's often missing, I find, with those people is, is the trust because everyone else in the spiritual community is like, oh, but I'm seeing these beautiful things and I'm experiencing this and I'm experiencing that. And there's a lot of comparison that happens there. And so you need to stop comparing yourself to everyone else and actually just look at what is the journey that, that your life is taking you on. Now, it goes both ways because then there are people that I've worked with who are very visual. Like I've had clients that I've worked with who are really, really visual. But like the first two years of them working with me, they're like, I'm seeing all these amazing colors and all these incredible things, but I don't know what any of it means. So, you know what I mean? Like it, it definitely goes in all directions with this. Um, and I've, I've like one of my very early clients that I work with, she was like the most visual person ever. She's like seeing all these amazing things and she couldn't interpret any of it. So she had all these beautiful like images coming to her, but no meaning behind them. And so she's had to learn how to actually integrate the meaning into the visuals, whereas other people are going the other way where they've got the knowing part of it already, but the visual part hasn't caught up yet. Right. And so it's so, so important to just trust your pathway into your awakening because it is so unique for everyone it is so different to everyone and the more you trust yourself and that journey and actually accept where you're at the more expansion you'll find in that space so really you know really invite you guys to let go of what's not working and actually just work with the gifts that you have so when I'm taking you guys through some of these processes and these journeys I know that I speak in terms of like visualizations and colors and stuff like that but I don't expect everyone in this group to necessarily see it or experience it in the way that I experience it. And whatever experience you have in this space is okay. So for some of you, you will just get more of a physical sensation. For some of you, you will get auditory feelings. For some of, sorry, auditory hearing. <laughs> um, some of you, you know, you will get the strong visual with no meaning behind it. And some of you will be able to tell me exactly, you know, the process that was happening, but you just know it somehow because you know it and there's, you don't know why you know it, Right. So I honor each and every one of your journeys and I really invite you guys just to trust that process because at the end of the day, the, the conversation that's happening here, even as we're talking, the conversation that's happening here is energetic and energy really can be interpreted in so many ways. The visuals, the audio, the physical sensations, they're all just ways that your body is interpreting the energetic message, but the energy itself is beyond all of that. It actually doesn't have a like a language, so to speak. It can't even be transferred in words sometimes. It's, it's just, it's a presence that's there. And so when we do these activations, what you're doing is you're sitting in that energetic field and that energetic field is allowing you to awaken and to raise that, that frequency and however your body decides to interpret that, whether it's through visions, whether it's through sounds, whether it's through physical sensations, smells, whatever, that's going to be unique to each and every one of you. 
And that is why in these group experiences, even though we're all in the same energy field, your experiences are all going to be very, very different in that, right? So please acknowledge that and honor that and please stop comparing yourself with other people because it's, it's just, it's not conducive to you. Okay. Just take a breath. Just know that you're okay and, and trust what you have because the more you trust what you have, the more you can actually develop and blossom from that particular pathway without trying to carve out a path that's actually not yours. Yeah. Right. A lot of my clients who start off very, very visual as they start getting into higher frequencies and more subtle frequencies, they all literally every single one, every single person that I've worked with one to one in the last two years has had this happen to them where at some point in the journey, they've gone, Isha, I've lost my visions. I think something is wrong. I think I'm not, this isn't working. The program isn't working for me. Everything's like wrong. I feel like I've gone backwards and I have to just be like, no, you're okay. It's all part of the journey. I've literally seen every single person go through that. And the reason it happens is because, um, so in, in the 3D, right, you have these very tangible physical senses. And then as your frequency goes up, most people actually go from the third to the fourth dimension. If you've watched my presentation, I speak about it in there. And then the fourth dimension is still very close to 3D and it's very tangible and it's very easy to see stuff in that space. But then as soon as your frequency starts getting closer to that higher 5D vibration, your senses haven't caught up yet. And so it takes time of sitting in that frequency and that's actually where people's knowing comes in and that's where they're more of the feeling sense comes in. And literally every person that I've worked with, their visuals and their auditory has taken a few months to catch up from that point. I don't know why it happens, but it just seems to be the way that your body integrates high frequencies that as you go higher up, your consciousness gets there first and then your senses catch up to that. It, it just seems to be how it goes. <laughs> so, um, so for you, Jen, like being in that position that I look at that and I'm like, great, that's perfect. Like that's exactly where you need to be. Keep trusting that there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a sign that you're actually moving. And I find that the more subtle the frequency is, it's actually harder to perceive. But then the longer you spend in that space, the more you actually then give yourself an opportunity to catch up for that. My journey over the last five years is like I've gone from being very visual to actually like I've had moments where I've gone, oh, my God, I don't see anything at all. And then, you know, then it'll come back. And then again, there'll be another frequency that I'll meet and I'll be like, I don't know how to see that. And so I've just had so many waves of this that I've just gotten used to it, you know, and each time I grow and I get to that next level, it's like I have this expansion and suddenly everything gets like brighter again and everything gets more um, expansive again and then suddenly the, the visuals kick in again and then something else might happen and then there might be like like different senses that come in so for me there are certain frequencies that are um that i might only have through smell like for example for me if if i connect with the energy of mother mary i pretty much always used to perceive her through the sense of smell it wasn't until probably like a year or two later that I actually started seeing her color frequency. Whereas for a lot of other beings, I was able to see their color frequency and then connect to them. I didn't see faces and stuff for like two or three years, I reckon. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, you just, just honor that guys. Like it's all part of the process. Um, cool. I'm glad that's making sense for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, just reading the comments, I can see you're all just in different spaces, you know, and at the end of the day, energy is energy and you're all exactly where you're meant to be. You know, like I know that and I always see people's overview and I see where you guys are all meant to be. And I trust that like from that bigger picture perspective, it's actually all okay, you know, and, and slowly you're all going to start like lifting up and just, you know, engaging in these different sort of experiences. <laughs> Beautiful. Cool. So... Today's meditation, um, speaking of Mother Mary and roses, we are actually doing a rose light activation today. Um, it's one of those energies that for the month of June, like we've had, um, we, I think we're like three eclipses this month or something. It's a bit of a ridiculous month. There's just like a lot going on. Um, and so this particular meditation I find is a very, very gentle, cleansing and expansive practice. It's simple, but I find sometimes the most um, simple processes are really the most profound, you know, so it's a what we're doing today is a variation on a chakra balance But in each of our chakras, we're just bringing in that pink rose light energy um, And and this particular pink frequency that we're working with it's a 10th dimensional frequency and I use it often in my healing work It's it's very soft. It's very subtle. It's um, like I, I often explain it as like if you're 
like laying on a, a pink fluffy cloud made of candy floss drifting through the sky. That's, that's the feeling I get when I work with this frequency. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Um, okay, let's begin by taking a deep breath in through the nose, exhaling out. You bring your awareness to your breath. Notice how your body is starting to relax. Make sure you breathe deep into your chest, deep into your belly, really opening up that diaphragm. And bringing your awareness now to your heart center. Breathe into your heart and feel that light in your soul, wanting, ready to expand. As you focus your awareness to that light, allow that light to expand. And as that light touches each and every cell of your body, notice how all the cells are also lighting up. Until your whole body is glowing with white light.
On your next in breath, bring your awareness from your heart down through your chakras and breathe into the center of the earth. Imagine that you've got roots coming out from under your feet, from the base of your spine, connecting you deep into the core of the earth. As you exhale, feel that earth energy coming up from the center of Gaia's heart, coming up through the roots, and right into your heart center. All that beautiful, nurturing, loving energy just feel that in your heart now. Allow yourself to receive, to be held and supported. Next in breath from your heart, breathe up through the crown, out to source, and allow yourself to connect with all that universal energy, the one consciousness, all that exists. Visualize yourself bathed in a beautiful pink light. If you can't see it, maybe you can feel it. We'll just have the knowing and the intention for this ray of 10th dimensional frequency to surround you. And just let yourself be immersed in that space.
On your next in breath, bring your awareness to your soul star chakra, just above your crown. Visualize now that there is a beautiful pink rose of light Just imagine that that rose is sitting inside your chakra and that it's slowly blossoming outwards, opening and expanding from the inside out. As that pink rose blossoms out, imagine that whole chakra is filling with that soft pink light. And then once that chakra is completely filled with light, imagine that that energy is now coming down, flowing into your crown chakra just at the top of your head. Now as you bring your awareness to your crown, imagine that there's a little rosebud that's gently opening from the inside out. Feel your crown chakra filling up with this soft pink rose light. Just ever so gently, ever so soft.
You may start to feel like a tingling or a pressure as your crown is starting to open. Just know that that's okay. If you're not feeling anything, that's fine too. Just trust that the process is happening exactly as you need it. Now let's allow that energy to flow down a little bit into your third eye, your pineal. Imagine that from the center of that pineal, there is a rose of pink light slowly blossoming outwards. Now allow that pink energy to flow even further down into your throat chakra. And again, visualize that pink light, that pink rose slowly opening from the inside out, allowing that chakra to open and expand from within.
Now take a breath and keep allowing that energy to flow down into your heart. And from the center of your heart, visualize a pink rosebud of light, gently opening outwards, expanding your heart frequency, filling it up with that beautiful, high vibrational pink rose light. Now on your next in breath, just flow that energy down into your solar plexus. Imagine a pink rose of light expanding outwards.
now let's flow that energy down to your sacral chakra. See that pink rose of light blossoming outwards from the inside. And your next in breath, let's flow into your root chakra. Visualize a pink rose of light expanding out.
Now bring your awareness to your earth star chakra. Let's flow that pink light. It's just below your feet. Visualize this white rose of light expanding outwards. We're going to finish off today's practice by connecting up all those chakras with a stream of flowing pink light. So move your awareness now back to your crown and then imagine that all of these roses of light are all connected together in a beautiful stream of pink light flowing through your body, through each and every chakra flowing from your soul star, through your crown, through your third eye, the throat, your heart, your solar plexus, the sacral, your root, your earth star, and then flow that light through the roots, out your feet, all the way into the earth, connecting again with the heart of Gaia. Let's take a few deep breaths here. When you're ready, you can gently bring your awareness back into the space. So 
taking some deep breaths in through the nose, exhaling out. Bring your awareness back into your body. And just bringing some gentle movements into your fingers and your toes. A little stretch if you need it. Keep taking those deep breaths as you ground back into your body. And just let me know in the chat box once you've come back. beautiful cool so let's just do a little sharing um so for those of you that are new what we do is we just get into little groups and um just have an, a chance to share what's going on which is a really important part of the integration process as well um that's okay gay um and for those of you watching the replay um just see if you can grab a journal and actually write this stuff down because that's another way of integrating as well so i'm going to pop you guys into groups um also because the first little bit of this recording with the announcements didn't record while you guys are in your little groups i'm going to do like a little sneaky quick re-record of that section um so that the people that are watching can do it so um yeah i'll let you guys go and then i'll bring you back in about I'd say six minutes. Okay. Um, I think it's slightly smaller groups today. So yeah. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, so for those of you that missed the um, bit before, I actually forgot to hit record when I was announcing some stuff. So while they're doing their sharing, I'm just doing a sneaky little quick re-record of this. Um, okay, so basically the annou announcements of this, the first is that I am moving to Adelaide in a couple of weeks. Um, it's not going to affect any of the course programs or anything like that, but I've been really strongly called there just to work with some of the ley lines and just to do some, some deep work in that space. Um, and be more, I guess, closer to the East Coast because there's a lot of stuff there that, that needs a bit of shifting. Um, and the grids in Perth are actually holding quite well now. So, yeah, so after 20 years of living in Perth, I'm actually relocating, which is super exciting. Um, and for those of you that are in Adelaide, that's really cool because um, obviously I might start running some events and stuff in Adelaide, which will be really exciting as well. So that's that news. Um, the other one is for those of you that were here last week, I did mention that I was going to announce this little exciting opportunity for some of you guys to work with me in a smaller setting. So we do have dates for that now. So this is how it's going to work. It's a small group laser coaching session up to six people. It's on July 27th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Perth time. The cost to be a part of that is 475 Australian dollars. And if you want to participate, just send us an email to my team contact at ishapatel.com um, and then yeah just let us know and obviously like if you need a payment plan or something like that we we can um, facilitate that as well what this program is and who it's for is for the people that are actually ready to go to that that next level 
So particularly for those of you in this group that are like business owners and you're actually assisting and supporting other people in their awakening, you guys are the ones that I want to work with at this higher level. Um, and this, the basically in this meeting, each of you is going to get like about a half hour hotspot, right? And so I'm going to be working with you one on one, giving you any processes, any tools, any guidance. Like if I'm, you know, need to do a reading for you or something, like basically whatever's required. I am quite intuitive in the process. Um, and then what will happen is you'll just get that opportunity for more of that it's more of like a like a one-to-one -one sort of thing now for those of you that you know if this isn't for you this isn't for you that's fine like it's okay it's not for everyone it's totally optional um but it, just to sort of quantify like in terms of um the, the pace like this is for people who want to move faster so what you would get in about three months of activations you actually get in like one 30 minute targeted laser coaching session with me um so again it is really for those people who just want to accelerate things move fast move quite quickly and have that more targeted one-to-one -one support so um there's a few of you that like i've tuned in and i'm feeling that you're meant to be a part of this um i assume most of you will probably reach out to me anyway it is going to be first and best dressed if you don't and i feel like you are supposed to work with me um and you don't reach out to me in the next few days i'll probably message you and just let you know look i feel like this will be really helpful to you um yeah that's pretty much it so it's exciting it's a cool little opportunity if we get more than six people applying for that um then there may be another one that will open up like around august september but at this stage we've only got the six spots so like for those of you that are really feeling like yep i want to work uh, with Isha at that one-on-one -on -one level, I want to go deeper, I want that more like extra sort of guidance and support, please reach out. Um, and again, like I said, I will be prioritizing the people that have the businesses and um, it's it's about the ripple effect. It's like if I can help you and you go and help like 100 clients, that that for me is a win-win situation. Um, but even if you don't have a business and you feel like you, you know, you're ready for that next level breakthrough, then obviously, you know, please reach out as well and um, we can get your spot too. So flick us an email and uh, yeah, my team will just reach out to you guys next week to organize payments and stuff like that plans whatever you need we can sort out logistics um and yeah i hope to see some of you guys taking up that opportunity so yeah we're just going to wait now for the rest of the people to come back from the group Okay, welcome back. Just wait for everyone else to come back in. You guys always look like you're just a little bit more glowing every time we finish one of these. <laughs> just more radiant. Um, 
does diet impact these activations? That's a great question to actually put on the thread and I can actually do a deep dive on that on Monday. So when that thread goes up, just pop it on there. Um, beautiful. Yes, it was a very gentle one today. I'm actually feeling I'm like it's almost time for a galactic activation, eh? Like maybe next week or the week after. I'm like, I sort of balance it up a little. It's like we'll do a Merkaba one and then we'll do a gentle one and then we'll do a grounding one and then um no, I didn't miss the sacral gallery. I think that <laughs> did I? I'm like, I don't think I did. <laughs> I think that might have just been you. <laughs> um have an amazing rest of today, weekend, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you. Hugs right back to you, Adriana, and um feeling the love. And yeah, I'll catch you guys soon. Okay. Enjoy lots of love, hugs, squishes all the fun things. <laughs> See you later.